to my colleagues if people do um, keep trickling through if you could allow them in that would be much appreciated thank you very much so welcome everybody and um, to this week's ticket training tuesdays and this week as you can see we're covering categories versus ticket types and tags uh, so if you've had it sort of laying there on the left hand side of your screen and not sure what to do with them you've joined at a good time so this is our agenda uh, for for today so we're for a welcome I'll let you know who i am if you don't know already we'll do some housekeeping how you can um, keep up with our ticket training tuesdays and where you can find them as well uh, we'll go through what each of the categories ticket types and tags are and we'll also have a demo where we'll go through the configuration how to set them up and how you will interact with them as well and at the end we'll have room for some questions as well so this is myself with a little bit less facial hair so my name is james Nurma and i'm part of the ticket help team uh, i may have spoken to a few of you already via live chat or email or maybe on a call uh, my goal is just to make sure that things are going as smoothly as possible um, for you and yes yeah, so if i haven't met you already nice to meet you all right so a bit of housekeeping and it pops up oops oh, it's glitching out there let me go back yeah. Give it a second. There it goes. All right, so a bit of housekeeping. So this is an interactive um, session, so please feel free at any time to raise your hand or and or um, call out when you have a question or anything to add. There's no need to, to wait until the end. Feel free to um, share the thought when you have it. Um, we welcome and we'd love any kind of feedback. So. Um, please do feel free to provide it and suggest topics of what you'd like to see next uh, by sending us an email at help at ticket.ai and also you'll be able to see to see the schedule and any recordings um, that we have of previous um, Ticket Training Tuesdays by going to the website featured there um, help.ticket.ai articles Ticket Training Tuesdays I'll chuck that in the, in the chat at the end um, so you can see it as well and oh that's got it in there already thank you very much jeff and you can also just search it on your on on any search engine that you use and it'll be the first one that you see there all righty so that's the housekeeping let's go into our first section so what are they i'm sure you, i'm sure you've seen them around <laughs> so what are they so firstly ticket types now these uh, ticket types they're basically a way for you to see tickets that come in and group them according to their nature so two of the big ones that you can see here are incidents and service requests um, so if a ticket has come through and it's a break fix type of deal you can group it as an incident if it comes through and they're asking for something uh, whether there be access or a resource you can group that as a service request it's really handy as people within different teams, as I'm sure you may know, um, they handle different different types of issues and requests. So we could, it's really good to um, separate the two. And during the demo as well, I have a few more examples of ticket types that you may find interesting too. Now, categories, what are they? So a ticket comes through. We've seen the ticket type. We've seen whether it's an incident service request or anything else. Now, where does it go? So these, these are what categories are for. So we can specify whether it's a networking type of deal, applications or desktop, and we can really see which department it belongs to. Again, there's more examples in the demo to come shortly. Now tags, these are really useful as they're ways to put specific details or instructions or reminders in tickets. So I've got an example here that says follow up 
required. Um, so to provide some context behind that, let's say a ticket is raised as a request for a new computer um, to be delivered, set up uh, in a particular office. So going through this process, that would be a service request. So we've established the ticket type. Um, the type of category would be, it will go to the desktop team. And then for tags, let's say, for example, I'm in the desktop team and I'm going out to deploy um, this machine. And then I realize that, oh, we don't have any more of the new keyboards in stock. So I still go out and deploy the machine, but I need a way to remind myself uh, for later that when those key new keyboards do come in, I need to get there. I need to get it to that user. So I might add a tag um, onto that ticket just as a reminder. And then when those keyboards do come in, I can filter, filter the tags, select the one that I select um, the tag that I'm looking for, follow up required or keyboard needed. And I can see those, see that list and get back to them in an orderly fashion. All right, so we'll explore that a bit further. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. So now it's time for our demo. So let me get that up on the screen for you. All righty. So here you can see our ticket types. Now, the ticket types and categories, the way they're configured um, is very, very similar. Um, the only difference is, as you can see here, uh, the, the first three are out of box, um, so you can't archive them. Um, but with the categories, you can archive them all. Um, so that's just the that's the only difference between the configuration of them, um, really. So while we discuss ticket types, you can have categories in your mind as well. Okay, but of course, that doesn't mean that you're stuck with request, incident, and change. Um, you can still edit them to whatever you'd like them to be. So how do you add a new one? Well, you just click up here, add new ticket type. You can specify its name, and then you can also choose which one you want to be your default one. So at the minute, my default ticket type is incident. So when I go to create a new ticket, whether that be in the web portal or on Teams, you can see here by default, I have incident. And it'll be the same thing for category. My default is set to application. So that's the first one you'll see here. All right, so that's how you add a new one and select the default. All right, so how do you edit them? So we touched on that briefly. Let's close these out so we can see it better. We'll just click these three dots on the right hand side and we can edit them and get back to the page that we saw uh, before. And this is also a good way to change your default ticket type as well. Another really nice, uh, really nice feature to play with is the fact that you can change the order of them um, by just dragging them around. So let's say I wanted prob uh, problem type of ticket type to be second in that list. I would just drag it up here place it there and now I'll just refresh it so that the change gets cemented in there and then I'll show you what it will appear like when we when we go into the new ticket I'm clicking everywhere okay so now when I go to ticket add ticket type of course incidents my default so it will stay there but you can see the order is just as I have it as I have it in settings. So you have complete autonomy of it, which is beautiful. And you can customize it just as you want, whether you're an alphabetical order type of person or anything else, you can really get it to the way that you like it. Now, how else can you customize them? Well, another very nice feature is the sort of parent child relationship that you that they have, as you can see here. Um, We've got account management and resource allocation as subtypes uh, in a way. And it's the exact same for, for categories. Um, you can have subcategories as it were. Um, they're created in the exact same way. 
So let's say, for example, I did add new ticket type and I created account management. So that would, oopsie daisy, that would initially appear on its own at the top here. And I want it to be as part of my request ticket type. So I'll just drag it, place it on top of request, and it will go right in there. And if I'm in alphabetical type of dude, I'll just drag it onto the top there. It's a really, really nice feature. And again, that will be replicated in both Teams and in the web portal, like this exact order that you specify it here, which is very nice, very nice to see. Um, you may have noticed that there's no option to delete um, in these, let me just go to one that we bark up here. There's no option to delete in either ticket types or categories. And that's just to protect your reporting data. As if you delete one of them, you lose all of the data that you have on them, which isn't which isn't ideal at all. So you want to protect you from any accidental deletions. But your alternative for that is to archive them. So once you click um, archive or archive problem, once I archive this one, let's cement that again with a refresh. I've archived problem and I'll go in here and you'll see that I no longer see problem there. All gone. So you can achieve um, sort of the same effect as a deletion as it won't appear to your users or your agents. Okay. So an interesting thing to note as well um, with these subtypes and subcategories is that they will all appear the same way in your automations and which is which is very handy um, as you can get very linear in where you want these account account management tickets to go uh, resource allocation tickets to go and I'll just show you an example of that we had um, our automations covered earlier on in another ticket um, training session so feel free to re revisit that if you want to see it in depth. But yeah, so I've got a, a ticket added here and you can see I can go, let's say ticket type. I can see every single one that I have. I can see the subtypes, um, the parent ones, they all appear the same way. So I can get as linear as I want to here, which is really nice. And it's the exact same for the categories. Um, you can see them all listed here as well the same way which is very very nice to have and also if you're interested in re interested in the reporting side of things you can see how they're shown here so i've got my active tickets by category i can get a report of that in excel and um, i've got a full list again it gives me the subcategories as well um, you may notice that not all of them are included here because I haven't used all of them um, on my tickets. So it's only the ones that are being are being used that are shown here. The rest you can assume uh, are zero. And it's the same for type. I've only used incident and request. You can see which one I favored in my lab uh, for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, you can have them all um, shown here. And that's displayed really nicely for you. Okay. So once again, feel free to ask any questions that you may have. All right, so now we're into tags. Let me delete this one so I have it for later. I'll just show you how we can create that on the fly. So with tags, to create a brand new one, same process. New tag at the top, and we can enter the name there. And also here, you'll note that you can click these three dots to edit and delete them. So that's a, that's a key difference as well. There's no archiving and you can delete them. A really nice feature uh, with the tags is that you can create them on the fly, which is lovely. So let me show you that in Microsoft Teams. So I'm an agent. I have a ticket that's come through. <laughs> Someone's asked for a new PC. So let's say I'm that desktop engineer. Um, they need, I've, I've, I've uh, deployed it, but they need an updated keyboard when they come in. 
so I'll just do tag here and I'll put keyboard uh, needed all right and once I okay that once I okay it it'll go through I might need to refresh my page let's see let's see so I think I did it a bit earlier which might make it a bit all right let's do that one from the top okay let's try that again we'll do get ticket 558 I might have done it a few too many times practicing for this demo so we'll do tag keyboard needed we'll okay it that should tag it up for me. Wait a second. Okay, and let's see if that gets replicated in our view here. Not just yet. It looks like I had some changes to my lab earlier, so it might be playing tricks on me there. Let me show you in the web portal. But that's how you would do it um, in MS Teams. Let me show you how it would go in the web portal. So I'll go tickets here. I'll go five five eight, and this is this is the preferred way. So maybe it works out better. So when I go to tags here, if I want to create a brand new one. Let's do keyboard needed. Oh, everything's not. Everything is even a bit weird for me today. Yeah, we had a big change to my lab, so maybe that's what's playing tricks on me. There we go, there we go. Apologies for that. So, again, one PC needed. I want to mark it so that I can see my... I can see which ones need that keyboard. I can do add tag. So now that is there. And I can save that. And then you'll notice when I go back to settings... Uh, oh, tags is right there, and it'll be the same effect in MS Teams. Um, so it's right there. So which is it's really, 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 really nice to have. And then when those keyboards do come in, if I want to go back and check and see where they are, I'll go filter tags. I can go keyboard needed. I can apply, and you can see I've got my ticket there which is beautiful, which is beautiful. I wish I had that when I was working in the desktop team. Uh, I wish, I wish. All right, so that's really handy there. So that completes our demo. So let's go back over here. So do we have any questions? I think I see one in the chat. In Teams, you have to click on send. Oh, good call, Bob. Good call, Bob. I'll note that for later on. Yeah. Feel free to ask away if you have any questions. If not, there's no worries. Uh, just in case you missed it, we do have the um, link for our help article on Ticket Training Tuesdays. I'll just repost that in the chat. And yeah, and you'll see the recording of this session and the ones that have come before it, and also the schedule for what's being covered uh, coming up next as well. But yeah, it can, you can have a question on absolutely anything that you like. No worries if not. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining. Not sure if we have any closing notes. But yes. 
thank you so much for joining. Um, next week, if you click on that um, help article in the chat, you'll be able to see what's coming up next week. It'll be a good one. Um, and it gives you uh, a layout of the next few weeks to come as well. So thanks again for joining and enjoy the rest of your days. Nice one, Anthony. Take it easy, everybody. Catch you later.